guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry Channel. This is the last part, the part 5 of your topic 4.1 Lewis structure. In this video, it's going to be one thing only, one simple thing about resonance structure. But before you watch this video, make sure you're already very, very good in drawing your Lewis structure. Okay? So let's see what is actually resonance structure. Simple. Resonance structure is a few different Lewis structure of the same molecule or polyatomic ion that differ only in the arrangement of valence electron. So it's basically the same a molecule or a polyatomic ion. It's the same molecule or polyatomic ion that will only have a slightly different arrangement in the valence electron. For example, this is an example of Lewis structure. And if you look at it, they are all NO3 minus. They are all the same polyatomic ion, which is NO3 minus. But what makes them different? The only difference that happened is actually the movement of the pi bond over here. All right. The same thing over here. All right. The same thing over here. So it's actually the movement of your valence electron that makes them different. So in the other words, they are actually equal to each other, right? Since they are equal to each other, look at the arrow that I use in between my resonance structure. The arrow that you must use between your resonance structure must be a double-headed arrow. Why a double-headed arrow? Because all of them are actually the same thing, but different in the arrangement of your valence electron only. Makes sense? So how do you know that you're going to have resonance structure? Simple, you need to draw your Lewis structure correctly. They must have this pi bond, all right? They must have this pi bond for you to move around. Then you can have resonance structure. And resonance structure is always very stable, all right? If your molecule or your polyatomic ion having a resonance structure, they are always more stable than the others, okay? So let's straight go into the example of your resonance structure. So the first example for the resonance will be a CO3 2 minus. So before you have the resonance structure, you need one thing. You need the Lewis structure. So make sure, make sure you know and you are so good in drawing the Lewis structure. Okay. I will just show you very, very quickly on how to draw the Lewis structure of your CO3 2 minus. First and foremost, you need the total valence electron. Bear that in mind, we have a video talking about just Lewis structure. So if you are not getting this, go and check out the video about Lewis structure. Okay? So the total valence electron for carbon is 4. Oxygen over here is 6 times 3, which is 18. We have a charge of 2 minus, so you plus 2. Therefore, you have a total of 24 electron. So your Lewis structure would then start out with your skeletal between your carbon and oxygen. Minus 6, you have your 18 electron left. The 18 electron were then used to octet all the terminal atom because your terminal atom right now is your oxygen. So we we'll use it to octet your oxygen over here. 6 times 3, so you have used up all your 18 electron. Remember to put in the charge bracket. But if you look at it very carefully, you realize that this is not the correct Lewis structure. Why this is not the correct Lewis structure? Simple. Your central atom carbon is not octet. You should know that when your carbon is involved, your carbon should always achieve octet. So how do we achieve octet? Pretty simple. Take one of the lone pair from the oxygen, any of the oxygen, and form a double bond. Right? Therefore, you will then form the correct Lewis structure. Make sure the one that have no changes shall remain the same. Okay, the one that have no changes shall remain the same. The one that forming a double one, the oxygen over here, will be loses one of its lone pair. But the two lone pair that have not involved in the changes will remain the same. And the charge. So which one is your correct Lewis structure? This is the correct Lewis structure. All right, this is not complete yet. And we are going to use this Lewis structure to draw the resonant structure. 
Okay, bear that in mind. Before the resonance structure, you must have the correct Lewis structure. Okay, so from this correct Lewis structure, how do we draw the resonance? Simple, we will actually focus on the pi bond. Alright, we know that the pi bond will move around in the other bond. Okay, but there will be some tricky part. So pay attention on what I draw. We will always start your resonance structure with the correct Lewis structure first. So the first resonance structure is already here, which is the Lewis structure that we have above. So just draw the Lewis structure that you have above correctly. Make sure every single valence electron is there. All right, and the position of the double bond. All right, so that is my charge over here, two minus. So the second Lewis structure, make sure the arrow that you use is a double-headed arrow for the second Lewis structure. Knowing that the second Lewis structure means the pi bond right now moving. Let's say I move to this. The one that have no changes, the carbon, that holding the single bond oxygen at the top, have no changes right now. So stay there, no changes, all right? The changes happen is on the left and on the right. The pi bond moving from the left to the right. So you have a pi bond over here and a single bond over here. Be very careful with the lone pair of the oxygen. If the oxygen right now is holding the double bond, the oxygen can only hold two lone pair. Your octet, two, 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 two. See that? And the oxygen right now that loses its pi bond, this oxygen will then have all of its lone pair. Two, 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 two. Eight electrons around it to achieve octet. So the tricky part is not only moving the pi bond, it's when you move your pi bond, your lone pair shall also change. Can you see that? Your lone pair is changing. All right. So be very careful when you move your pi bond around. Your lone pair must also change. So over here, the charge. So another one of the resonance structure will be this pi bond right now. All right. Moving to here. Okay. But be very careful with the lone pair. All right. So right now, the carbon that holding the oxygen on the left will have no changes, complete with the three lone pair. The one on the right loses its double bond to the one at the top. So this one will then gain back all the six electrons around it, all the three lone pair. So the pi bond or the double bond right now will be on top where the oxygen holding only two lone pair. And that will be your correct resonance. Make sense? So I hope you can see how the changes is actually happening. All right, let me make it clearly for you. When you have the double bond, you must hold only two lone pair. Can you see that? When you're holding the double bond, you're holding only two lone pair. The one that holding double bond will be holding only two lone pair. See that? But the one that holding single bond, the one that holding single bond will be having three lone pair. The one that holding single bond will be three lone pair. As we agree. Can you see that? So it's not only about changing the bond only. You always need to remember the bond represent the electron. So when the bond move, the lone pair shall also change. Okay. And last but not least, since they are resonance structure, Therefore, the arrow that you must use over here is also double-headed to prove that they are resonance structure, okay? Next, we have NCO minus. So the NCO minus Lewis structure, your nitrogen over here is 5, carbon over here is 4, oxygen is 6, your charge over here is 1. So you have 16. So your NCO minus Lewis structure should look something like this. You minus out your 4, so you have 12 electron left. Then you octet all your terminal atom. So make sure your terminal atom must be octet first. And after you octet your terminal atom, you use up the 12 electron. Simple, okay? But again, you realize that your carbon as your central atom is not achieving octet yet. 
So what do we do? We are going to bring the two lone pair from the nitrogen to form a double bond, two lone pair from the oxygen to form a double bond. Therefore, the correct Lewis structure or the final Lewis structure for your NCO- shall look something like this. N holding only two lone pair left, forming a double bond with carbon, carbon holding another double bond with oxygen also having only two lone pair left with the charge of minus. See that? Simple. And we are going to use this Lewis structure to draw the resonance structure. So how should the resonance structure look like? The resonance structure for your NCO minus, how should it look like? So the resonance structure over here is definitely moving your pi bond. All right, but how do I move my pi bond around when both of them is already double bond? we can form triple bond. So your first resonance structure definitely is your Lewis structure that you have on top. So you basically just recopy the Lewis structure that you have on top as the first resonance structure. Make sure you remember the charge. So let me show you your second resonance structure first. Then we will look at the changes. Your second resonance structure will look something like this. The nitrogen, holding single bond to the carbon, holding triple bond to the oxygen. But it's not complete yet because I still have the lone pair. So I want you to pay attention on the changes. Right now, the bond is actually moving over. So you have a double bond, a double bond, to a single bond with a triple bond. But what happened to the lone pair? Bear that in mind, nitrogen right now holding only single bond with two electrons. So to achieve octet, nitrogen shell having back all the lone pair. Complete octet. Okay, but what about oxygen over here? Oxygen will only hold one lone pair to achieve octet. Because in the bond, you already have six electrons. Two, two, two. With only two more electrons from the lone pair, you achieve octet. Carbon forever octet, right? So look at the lone pair changes that happen in our structure. So remember, it's not only moving around the bond, it's always moving the bond with the lone pair, okay? And last but not least, your another resonance structure will look something like this. Now the triple bond is between nitrogen and carbon the single bond between carbon and oxygen. Okay, back to your lone pair. So nitrogen, how many lone pair do you think you need? Obviously, we only need one more lone pair. Okay, how about your oxygen? How many more lone pair that you need for oxygen at this moment to achieve octet? You need three more lone pair for the oxygen to achieve octet. So I hope you can see how we play around with the lone pair and also the bond. So please don't just move the bond. When you move the bond, you move the lone pair. Remember? Okay. So this is the correct resonance structure for your NCO minus. Bear that in mind, whenever you move your bond, you will also move your lone pair. So be very, very careful with that. Make sure your lone pair and your bond is correct and achieving of that okay and that's it about resonance structure simple easy with one condition you are very good in drawing your lewis structure so make sure you know how to draw your lewis structure before you proceed to your resonance structure okay if you have any question about resonance structure drop it in the comment below and i'll get back to you as soon as i can Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you again in the next video.